Is there anything you wanted to set the stage with? Any kind of framework? Uh, yeah, look, I mean, there's, there's many, many variables uh, with how we analyze whether a deal is good uh, or bad. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to be seeing today is the main bits, you okay. know, to immediately give you an idea of whether a property is worth pursuing or not. So this, this isn't the, the sort of nitty gritty detail. This is the higher yeah, level. The high level, like immediately, if you just do these basic steps or what we will do our basic steps just to see, okay, is it worth even looking at or should we just completely ignore it and move on to the next one? So that's the okay. first thing. The second thing is like, okay, so a, a lot of these areas, uh, you know, they're not random. You know, there's, there's a lot of, I guess, back end work uh, with our team to determine uh, what areas we're targeting. Mm -hmm. So right now we're looking at specific houses within these areas, but I want to make it a point that we didn't just randomly pick these areas, you know, out of thin air, you know, with the, these are, there's a lot of research that has gone in the background for us to be targeting these areas, which has, okay. has performed quite well. And I we, must say. And we're not going to touch on the research element in that setting though. Is that what you're saying? Not too much, maybe yeah. another episode, but you okay. know, for the purpose of this one, no, not, not, uh, not, not too much on that. So this is assuming someone's what they've done the research on the area. They know mm -hmm. exactly where they've what built the relationships with the agents, that kind of thing. Yeah. And now this is just about the property has been presented. Yeah. How do you actually assess if it's a deal? Correct. Or correct. Gotcha. And I also, last thing I want to say is that all these houses uh, are off market. Mm -hmm. um, they were presented to us as off markets okay. and the, uh, the off market component was obviously based on our relationships with these agents. Mm -hmm. Um, which uh, obviously we spend a lot of time building and maintaining and so on. Even though this particular house, if you're if you're watching this video, is listed as uh, online and under offer, mm. when we had the property, it was off market. So what happens a lot is like, let's say we say no to it and, uh, you know, the property sells to someone else. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time the agent will chuck the property online to show the world that they've sold this house as a bit of a marketing tool mm. uh, or maybe to collect more buyers in case the contract falls through. So we get this a lot. We, we get, we buy, even if properties that we buy as off market houses, they'll, uh, after we have it under contract, you'll mm -hmm. see the online listing come up. So it, it doesn't look like it's an off market deal, but it, but they actually are. It's also, so it registers in, against the agent's sales record on realestate.com. Cause right. otherwise there it, we go. if you sell half your stock yeah. off market, yeah, yeah, it yeah. looks like you only sell like 20 properties a year. Correct. People yeah. are going to look at you and go, well, this, yeah, no, that's very good. Yeah. Correct. So, so yeah, just maybe a bit confusing there, but that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. So as far as setting the stage, I feel like we're, we're all over it as far as where we've got to these deals now, but yep. now we're standing in, oh, actually we're sitting, we're si sitting in front of <laughs> Jick's place. Am I, am I still saying it like a South African? <laughs> I'm just going to say it phonetically, 10 Jack's Jack's place, Aurelia. Yeah. So this house was presented to us uh, from an agent, uh, I would say about a month ago or so now. Okay, um, and, and so just for anyone wanting time reference, because I don't know when this episode is going to go out, but it is yeah. currently mid December that we're recording this twenty twenty three. Yeah, correct. So you know, look, we we get about you know a hundred to one hundred and fifty uh, off markets presented to us uh, on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, we knock most of them back. Uh, most of them are quite uh, quite bad, uh, whether it's the price or whether it's the area or the house or whatever, which we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll go through soon. Mm -hmm. So as far as the process is concerned, Simon, I've, I've got some notes here. So first you're going through comp sales, then comp rentals, location, cash flow, and more of an analysis on the area. So are we starting with comp sales with, um, with Jix? Always, always start with comp sales. You know, that's always the make or break. Um, okay. And how's this one, uh, how's this look? Well, it's very simple. Like it's obviously a, a you know, a three bed, one bath, uh, no garage house, 700 odd square meters. Mm -hmm. So immediately what you would do is open realestate.com.au and just click on sold. Type in Aurelia. And this is really good for anyone that doesn't have access to RP data, which let's face it is majority of the population. Mm. So you just click on house, you filter it. So you filter three bedrooms. I would, I would often filter max three bedrooms as well. You can chuck in one bathroom if you like and just do a search. And then when you do a search, it goes newest to highest. That's my default setting. And you can start to see what houses have been selling for. We uh, had actually uh, had the opportunity to, well, after a bit of negotiating, mm -hmm. uh, we had the opportunity to buy this house at four seventy, mm -hmm. uh, four hundred seventy thousand dollars, and immediately one of the very first houses that you sold that that has sold, as you can see, a very similar house, three bedroom, one bathroom. This one's got even the car space as well, four car spaces, but I reckon it's only got one because a lot of agents put down more car spaces if you can park cars on the driveway, which is 
cheating. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I always used to ask the question, how many can you fit out the rain? That's a, that's a car space if, yeah. if it's undercover. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, this one sold for 432, um, you know, very similar specs. You can even tell that the age of the property, like we haven't even got into when they were built, but you can tell they were, you know, pretty similar kind of built properties, similar, you know, tiled roof, uh, brick and tile, that type of thing. And they were asking 470 for jicks. They were, they were for jicks, for jicks. <laughs> They want a 470. So that's a that's an immediate red flag, yeah. right? Like, you know, it's it's basically, in my opinion, not even uh, market value. It's do, way above market value. Do you even bother looking any further if you get that? Oh, wow, this is a real fixer-upper too. Yeah. So look, if the one that sold for 432 that yep. we just looked at as a comparable, it, it does need work. You know, yep. you can tell just by scrolling through the pictures. You know, I bought and owned a lot of these properties. It doesn't look that much work, honestly. Mm. If I just scroll through new walls, it's new cosmetic, new 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 floors. Yeah. You know, maybe a new bathroom. You might get away with like a twenty thirty k reno. Yeah. So if you think think about that from a logical perspective, let's say you had to put in thirty k. You know, you you bought this for four thirty two. That'd be bring you up to about you know four sixty four seventy mm-hmm. that type of thing, and that would be the same as this house. We had the opportunity to, to buy on Jex, yeah. On Jex, yes. And if you scroll through, it also needs work. So immediately, for me, it's again another red flag. Mm-hmm. You know, both houses need work. One we can get for four seventy. The other one just sold for four thirty. And when I say just sold, that literally sold um, about five days ago, ten days ago. It's a very just sold. Yeah. So it's a very close comparable. So that's uh, that that for me is uh, is 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 almost passable. But so, if you want to scroll down and have a look, look another one here. So for three eighty eight, that was in November. Um, you know, again scrolling through, nothing flash. This guy's got a lot of stuff. And and for anyone watching on YouTube right now as well, if yeah. you're listening on Spotify, let's just say Hoarder's House. But this is um, a very quick lesson in why not to sell a tenanted property. Um, <laughs> if you're looking yeah. at what is it, twenty eight Nathaniel Way in Orlean. Twenty eight Nathaniel yeah. Aurelia. Aurelia. Yeah, you can see. You know, it's got a lot of stuff inside. It's very oh, not wow. not very presentable. In my experience, houses that are tenanted are very difficult to sell, not only because it's not presentable, but the tenants don't want you to sell it. Yeah. And they, they want to stay. Access. Yeah, they want to deny access. They're going to get COVID suddenly, mm. uh, <laughs> you know, several times I back to back. Yeah. Um, and they're just going to not want you because obviously they don't want to get kicked out at the end of the day. So conversely, a lot of the houses that we buy as investors come with tenants. You mm-hmm. know, if they're good tenants or maybe not tenant like this that obviously you know just looks like they're not looking after the place very well but it could be a win-win you know Mm. if we get a house that's off market and has a tenant in there then great everyone you know everyone's happy so so far you found two comp sales that are well below Mm -hmm. one one about what 50 uh, 50 ish k below another almost what 90 ish k below yeah so as far as the first checkpoint of comp sales it's a dud it's It's a done so you you don't even go any further as far as at this point i wouldn't go further okay um one really important point I want to make as well is these two comps are literally the first two that have come up. I yeah. mean, there's one here, it's contact agent. I mean, if I dig a deep, a big, a bit deep, I'll find out what the sold price was. Mm-hmm. But the ones that do have prices like immediately December and late November, it writes it off already. So mm-hmm. we're not, look, we're not talking about properties that sold six months ago, eight months ago. These sold literally weeks yep. um, apart. Um, so yeah, that, that would, uh, I would immediately, immediately write that off. So is that a no deal? That's a no deal. Absolutely I feel like not. we should have some kind of sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, mm. You can talk to your team about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's a no deal. Before we move on to the next one, though, Simon, if this yeah. box was actually ticked, mm-hmm. what, what would your next steps be? Just so we can have a bit more of a look. Uh, next steps would be check out the rentals. Uh, you know, if um, uh, this particular house, when we were told about it, was rented for 470 per week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we would, uh, uh, check out, uh, if the cash flow makes sense, mm-hmm. uh, immediately just off the top of my head, uh, you know, a 470k purchase and 470 per week rent is again, not, uh, not viable. Yep. It's as, like a 5% as, yield. Uh, I think it may be even less than that. Um, but it's, it, it, especially in Perth when mm-hmm. you can easily get 6% plus, mm-hmm. um, it's just not, uh, not, not doable as well. And then sometimes houses are under rented. So, you know, if I were to go a little bit deeper, I would look on the rental tab. Again, really simple exercise, house, minimum three beds, on the uh, maximum one well. bath, yep. search. You know, what are they renting for? Uh, available now, maybe not this house. Actually, what, what is it? Is 
See, this is another trick that people do to make you click on it. 472 per week. What, so saying available now instead of the price? Yeah, because, they, you know, obviously you can't see the price. Yeah. They make you click on it to see it. Um, actually, clever. no, this is a Nala. Sorry, I didn't write in, type in Aurelia. That's my mistake. My apologies. So this one here, three bedroom house, 450 per week. Uh, this one here's 475 per week. So again, you know, it's pretty accurate. 470 per week, you're pretty much on the money um, at 470K purchase price. Basically, the house is overpriced. Yep. You know, if this was around 400K maybe, then maybe it might be worth looking at, but yeah, it's not. So um, to talk me through one thing though, deal or no deal, we've yeah. already gone, it's a no deal, mm -hmm. but do you come back with an offer where it is a deal or do you just walk away? Usually before all this happens, we've yep. already been negotiating back and forth. And okay. we, we negotiate at the same time of doing this. So, I mean, we've been doing this so, so many times that we typically go through this process as we're on the phone with the agent talking about the property. So as much as we're going through this over like an hour, this is like a, a, a two to 10 minute process for you guys? Seconds or? sometimes. Seconds. Okay. You know, yeah. like how, how long does it take to type in a, a suburb and, yep. you know, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms as your agent is explaining, you know, what the property is, where it is. Gotcha. You know, you can do it in tandem after a while, maybe not immediately. But the other thing as well is, I mean, we we buy in this area quite a lot. So we mm -hmm. kind of know immediately, you know, what's a good number and what isn't and what works. Just got the market knowledge. Already. Yeah, but for yeah. the purpose of this, you know, showing you guys, this mm -hmm. is this is how we would normally do it. Let's assume the rent came out good. We would okay. then go check out um, the area. All right, uh, so we're going, what's his Google, ma Google just, Maps? Yeah, simple. Everyone's got this. You know, just zoom out, have a look around what's around it. You've got these, these parks, these fields, what looks like to be a school. Yeah, um, or a jail. Or a jail. <laughs> no, it's Gilmore College. <laughs> it's a school. It's a progressive jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, you're not, you're, you're, it's, it looks like to be in a pretty quiet street. Um, you know, you're, you're far away from this massive thing here, Gil, Gilmore Avenue, which is a, a, a busier road uh, yep. in Aurelia. Uh, you're also not too far from Quinana shops. You know, I wouldn't say walking distance, but probably, you know, five minute drive where you've got the Audi and Wool Woolies and all this kind of stuff. But so you're also not across the road from it either. You're not across the road from it. Either. It's not yep. a bad position yep. wise. Uh, you know, if you look, zoom in a little bit more into the house, you can see that it's a pretty big block. We know this already, but the way the house is positioned, it's quite near the front of the block. So you can do a lot of stuff out back. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like if I go on street view, you can immediately tell that this house, which is this one, mm -hmm. got a bit of side access. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, potentially down the track, you've got granny flat potential. Uh, I haven't checked the zoning because like I said, we kind of passed on it, but if the zoning allows maybe even like a, a, a subdivision. And I can see there's big solar system on the roof. Do you guys take that into account at all or don't care? No, don't really care. Don't care? I mean, it's, um, it's, it's a nice to have, but to be honest with you, uh, you know, we see a lot of properties where the solar system either doesn't work or it breaks mm -hmm. and, from a, a purely an investment perspective, it's actually not not a good thing to have long term. Yep. Because if it goes wrong, you have to fix it. Uh, I'm so, going through that right now with one of mine. Yeah, I mean, there's all these incentives and stuff at the moment. Solar schemes I'm 100 familiar with, but mm -hmm. um, you know, in short, I just like to keep houses as simple as possible so that you don't you don't set yourself up for uh, for a lot of dramas later. Makes sense. While I'm on Street View, I would typically scroll around and have a look around the street. One of the things I'm checking out for is big power lines. Okay. So you've got these normal standard ones, but if I'm scrolling along, you see like one of those big sort of Eiffel Tower looking things, yep. then that's obviously something to avoid. Uh, but we do check on that, you know, with uh, if you're watching a video, this next tab, which is a link uh, where you can see where the, um, the, the power lines are uh, simply by typing in the address. Are we right to put these links in the show notes, mate? Yeah, for sure. I mean, these are public knowledge, you know, they're literally government websites. So just you know. in case, it's obviously it's not going to be very helpful for anyone looking outside of uh, WA right now. But if you're looking in WA, which let's face it, a lot of people are, yeah. uh, click the link in the show notes below so you can actually have a play with what Simon's looking at right yeah. now. I mean, we know there's no big power lines nearby, but if there was, then you can check this and, and, and see what, uh, how, what extent you know, the, what, what type of power lines it is and so on. And to Rule of thumb is if it's red, don't buy it. <laughs> right. I was just going to say, talk us through, like, what are we looking at? So th this is good now, this picture? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this at all. Uh, the, the actual problem with power lines isn't just a perception that, you know, people are going to get sick and stuff living near power lines. But mm -hmm. if you're a certain distance away, uh, you actually, it's actually very difficult to get a loan. Uh, you know, typically you need at least 30% deposit mm -hmm. uh, because banks just see it as a, a lot higher risk. 
uh, for whatever reason. So, you know, we avoid uh, properties near big power lines, not because it's only because it's hard to get a loan, but the perception does play a little bit on people's minds. Very few people want to live close to big power lines for, you know, health concerns and things like that. And your valuers will flag it as well. Yeah, definitely. Potentially, you know, it's just not, not a good thing all around. And then, you know, after looking around, maybe nothing sus, you know, you would then check out flood maps, uh, bushfire maps and things like that. Um, which, you know, similarly you would type in the, uh, the, the address, uh, for the property to Mm -hmm. see if it's in a flood zone. But yeah, here's the flood maps. Again, it is very clear. There's, I mean, you can tell pretty much immediately just by looking at Google Maps after you've done this for a while, there's literally no waterways around it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the chances of it being in a flood zone is would be minimal. But and, every, all these boxes are ticked and there's nothing close by. So happy so days. This property is also on the low side of the street. High side, low side. Do you care at all? No. No? Look, it, you know, everyone's got their own perceptions of being the high side is better. If you look at any suburb that's grown a lot, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, it doesn't matter. Low side, high side, north facing, south facing, they all grow, mm-hmm. right? So it's not like personal preference. You might prefer to live on a certain block on the high side or low side of the street. That's up to you. But in terms of value, in, in terms of growth fundamentals, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Kind of the same as if it's facing north, facing south, that kind of yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you just got to be unemotional. Yep. And look, I mean, if flooding is really of, of concern, I mean, immediately just looking at Google Maps now, scrolling mm-hmm. around, you're not you're not at the low end of the street. You know, you're, you're it kind of slopes up and you're kind of halfway up. So if you're a, if you're getting flooded, there's bigger problems around you. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people are in pain, not just you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if that's any. If that, any, that consolation. Gives, yeah, any consolation <laughs> <laughs> you'll be you'll be you'll be uh surrounded in a tent city by a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of your neighbors <laughs> and yeah so but anyway obviously the comps didn't work out on this one so we kind of just pass on it okay so this is a no deal this is that, definitely a no deal correct now next time are we, we're going to get a chance to actually look at the cash flow side of things because i think that's the only thing that we didn't touch on but what, yeah. what is property number two to check out uh, property number two is a property that's uh, over in a suburb called Quinn's Rock, which is uh, quite a nice buzzy suburb uh, on the north side of Perth. Now, this one we got as an off-market as well. I know it says uh, uh, it's listed online. But like uh, you said before, this is just because they want yep. the agent want to market it properly gotcha. and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, checking this one out, um, you know, again, the very first thing we do is check out comparables. So here we are uh, looking at a three bedroom, one bathroom, again, a little bit cheeky with a car space, uh, but I would say one car space, Mm -hmm. 450 odd square meters. If I look at solds in uh, Queens Rock. And so we're just heading to realestate.com.au again. Simple. Sold tab, house, three beds, three three beds max. Three bed. Sometimes I like to do sold dates, you know, especially in very hot markets. You Mm -hmm. don't want to look at stuff that's 12 months old. So maybe last three months. Yep. Um, but you can gauge it. What was it again? It was a, a three one, bed, one bath. bath. So here we go. Yeah, I feel like 12 months old in Perth may as well be 12 years old. Now. Yeah, it's completely incomparable, you know. So three bed, one bath. Look, this one very recently just sold for five, uh, uh, 510. Okay. And uh, what have we got for block size? 388, 388 square meters. It's a smaller block. Smaller block. I one's 458. Yep. This one is also That's at the back head. of a batter, battle, what, what, what oh, you call it? battle axe, yeah. Yeah, okay. Hammerheads. I don't know why, but anyway. Because <laughs> it's like the head of a hammer. Is it? Oh, right. Yeah. I thought you meant the shark. No. I think he wears the other side. <laughs> <laughs> it's like half his eyes gone or something. Yeah, okay. Mutilated <laughs> yeah, hammerhead, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, 12B. You can immediately tell. So I always, I'm always already a little bit suspicious whenever I see A's or B's. Okay. Because you can tell that, I mean, immediately it's obviously a subdivided property. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing wrong with it per se, but you know, a lot of, a lot of people are iffy about, you know, living very close to their neighbors, especially if you're behind. Yep. So I would say battle axe blocks like this is actually a, a bit of a detriment. It actually reduces value. Absolutely. And you're, you're also surrounded by houses. <laughs> so that's never a good thing, mm. especially if one of these guys throws a party, um, you're not going to be too happy. Uh, and then you go through it, look, standard house, nothing too special, brick house. You've got a Ooh. glimpse of water there. It's a touch uh, of blue. A touch of blue. But yeah, just standard, you know. But the main things to look at is obviously what it's sold for. It's sold for the 13th of December. So this is... Or sold, it's sold date. Sold date, sorry. Yep. Yes, correct. But I would say that this is a worse property than ours, you know, be- because it's a battle axe. Yeah, we've got smaller block, less and desirable also a smaller block. block. 
Correct, correct. Okay. Um, so that's uh, the one of the first comparables that as, we're looking at. As far as proximity to the water, because mm-hmm. obviously water changes things quite a lot. Whereabouts is this one? Like, do, do you look into that side of things? And Absolutely, go, yeah. Okay. Especially beach, like properties near the beach, you have to take that into account. So if I just Google this, uh, well, it's already there, but I'll um, I'll check this one. This one is actually quite close to the water, you mm-hmm. know, not too far. Okay, so what have we got? Like um, so that's two definitely back? definitely a, a, a bonus, uh, so to speak. Yep. So I would add this as a plus, yep. uh, because if I look at our one, it's a little bit further away. You know, it's not it's not night and day difference, mm-hmm. but I would say a couple hundred meters away. Yeah. So if anyone knows Quinns Rock, anyone know everyone, uh, um, people would know that it, anything sort of. I always get this wrong, east and west, because I'm from the east coast. But anything west of Marmion Avenue is much more sought after because obviously you're closer to the water. Of course. So both these properties are on the west side of this road mm-hmm. and uh, both are relatively desirable locations, you know, okay. at the very least. So it's obviously going to be more desirable being closer to the beach, but the distance isn't that different that you would go, okay, that's going to make a huge difference to the price. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I mean, look, it can, if the prices were very similar, mm-hmm. you know, you might sort of take that into consideration as a bonus for this comparable but then it's kind of balanced out by the fact that it is a battle axe and it is also a much smaller block. Gotcha. So, you know, you have to kind of just be a little bit neutral mm-hmm. with the way that you assess things. All right. So they were looking at, what was that, 510, the other one just sold for? What, and what did yeah. Short Ridge, what were they asking there roughly? Uh, so for our one, uh, original, originally when we spoke to the, uh, to, to the agents, you know, somewhere around the sort of 500K-ish mark as well. So that that was the original expectation. And so you're already looking at that, going, all right. So this one sold for five ten. They're asking five hundred. It's yeah. under. It might not be sheep stations under, but yeah. it, this is worth continuing the search now. It, it's definitely worth looking into a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, bearing in mind that there's been zero negotiation to this point. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just kind of assessing it as is based on what we've we've been told. Okay. Yeah, we can move on to the next step, I suppose. So our next step is uh, comparable rentals. So comparable go rentals. Back so to real estate. We, uh, yeah, correct. So we'll check out realestate.com.au, check out what these houses are renting for. Uh, again, rent, click on rent, type in Queens Rock, filter it, house, three bedrooms, three bedrooms, one bathroom. Now, what's interesting here is there's only three properties available in the entire suburb for rent. Mm. I know we're talking about three beds, but if we even just take away the three bed component, any, mm-hmm. and just do any, same with bathrooms, just any, but houses only. There's, there's 14 properties in total for rent in Queens Rock. Scro- um, scroll down a second again. What was that? Oh, you've gone back. Sorry. Got to say that other one needed look a bit of love. Which one? This one. This one. Yeah, look, I mean, you get range, a range of different types of properties uh, in all these suburbs. You get newer, nicer houses. You get older, you know, houses, perhaps like this one. I would say... Great ev- photos. Every... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry um, <laughs> listing agent there, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, you know, you, you, again, you kind of have to just compare it to uh, what you have. So if I look at Shortridge, mm-hmm. which is our one, you know, standard house, you know, it's it's it's. I wouldn't say it's amazing, mm-hmm. but it's clearly been renovated. You got a nice modern kitchen. Uh, you know, you you have to ignore all these sort of uh, fake furniture, furniture and yep. things like that. But overall, it's just it's a simple house. Um, clean and tidy, you know, bu- uh, renovated bathroom, uh, new carpets, don't know about the walls, but they look okay anyway, at least at least uh, um, on face value. Got the laundry, you know, decent block area, that type of thing. So we have to compare that to what similar houses are renting for. So if I sort of bring this filter back to three beds, and <coughs> this one's for 500 a week, this one's a, a three-bedroom one, again, 311. I would say our one is a little bit more modern. Mm-hmm. A little bit nicer, but I would say especially s- that kitchen. Yeah, but I would say similar. It's also in a very very similar location. Yeah, you, you can look here compared to our one. Yeah, so really similar. Here, very similar. Yep. So if that's available for five hundred, look, and this is one of those things as well where you kind of have to be on the ground, which we are like literally every day, to know that this house, Christian Circle, being listed at five hundred, is currently getting smashed with inquiries and with uh, people. So uh, applying. You're saying that house. that's more than likely not going to rent for 500. That's probably going to rent for more. Look, the, you know, there's all these measures at the moment to stop uh, property managers from uh, creating like a bidding war mm-hmm. for houses to rent. But it, 
that's the reality the end of, the of day, what's happening. Supply and demand. Yeah, absolutely. In. Like, you know, if nothing's stopping uh, tenants uh, putting in higher offers to secure a property, if that's what it takes. Mm. So a lot of the times when we see a property uh, that's listed at $500 per week, uh, it would easily rent for 550 you know, or maybe even more. Yeah, right. So there's a massive gap. But I will say that whatever bonus you get on top, you'd consider as just a bonus, right? But, but if someone's listening to this now, Simon, and they don't have the boots on the ground the way that you guys do, mm. uh, is that a bit of a dangerous thing to start playing the assumption game? Correct, correct. It is. So that's why we would look at this and go, okay, this is what we're going to base it off. Okay. 500-ish per week. Yep. Yeah. So $500 per week for this one. If I have a look at the other ones, uh, there's – this one, which is 580 per week, I think we just talked about this house. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I will say this one has an extra bathroom and I don't know if the car spaces are legit, but we can quickly look at that by checking out the picture. So it looks like it's just a carport, but we can find they've, that out. They've cut half of it off though. So maybe it is a double carport, but. Well, we can just literally look at Google Maps. I mean, it's all this information is all literally right here. So if I just look gotcha. at this house. It is a double carport, oh, yep, yep. so it can fit two proper And that cars. actually looks like potentially a roller door behind it as well. Sorry, I'll bring it up again. We're just talking about the house. Uh, no, I think it's just a part of the... Uh, oh, it's just more fence? The design, yeah. It's right. like color yeah. bond style or something. But yeah, you know, two bath, two garage, three bedroom house, 580. But I would say the house is, you know, a bit, a bit how you're going. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not, I mean, it'll rent definitely, but it's obviously a lot older than the one that we're looking at. So you might sort of think to yourself, okay, it might have an extra bathroom, might have an extra garage, uh, extra, extra, yeah, car space, but the house is in worse condition. So maybe it doesn't balance out completely. So maybe 580 per week is on the higher end. Mm-hmm. Maybe our one can rent for somewhere around 550 okay. you know, as a result. Does yep. that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, right, so, so far this is checking out. We're, we're doing our comp sales. It's looking all right. We're yeah. doing our comp rentals. It's looking all right. Comp rentals. I would say the rentals, if the property was that we're looking at was about 500K. Yep. Um, and, you know, you can potentially rent for between 500 to 550 per week. I would say that's borderline uh, not acceptable. So you'd be looking at what, securing it for more like I would defi- high fours? Correct. Or? Yeah. Okay. I would, the price would definitely need to be lower. The other thing that probably wouldn't be super acceptable is the fact that the, um, when we looked at the other house that sold, even though that was a worse house, mm-hmm. that one also sold for, I think it was 510 when we looked at it before. Yep, that's right. Uh, so if we can get our one for 500, even though it's a better house, like maybe it's just me being a little bit picky about the level of the deal that we're getting, mm-hmm. I would probably need to negotiate down to uh, slightly, slightly further down as well so that I can at least have more certainty that I'm going to get e- equity out of it pretty quickly. Okay. All right, so what are we doing for the next steps then? We're looking more around location or do you feel like you've already kind of covered location by looking at the rentals and the sales? Uh, no, well, no, location, I suppose. I mean, you know, we know Queens Rock well. We know it's a it's a decent area, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's I think it is important just to check out, uh, like we did with the last property, uh, the actual location of the house, you know. So if I look at it, it is on this weird sort of laneway thing. So look, I'd, I, I would say that this isn't a deal breaker. You know, it's fine. Like, you know, we see a lot of these houses that are like this, especially in built up areas. It's almost more like a, a like an estate type. I see what you mean. It's it's not a battle axe, but it's not quite on the road. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to be positive about it, you got this entire driveway pretty much to yourself, you know, or this little bit of road. Yeah. But, well, you know, maybe that might be stretching it a little bit. <laughs> so the, the right privacy person. aspect. Of yeah, it. correct. I mean, yeah. if we look at Street View, it's not like a, it's like a little, you know, sort of private road type thing. So, uh, yep. you know, it's not like super bunched up. I don't know if you can even go up it. Or, no, you can't. So, so yeah. Oh, I think you can. You, you just had the little, there you go. Is that no, it just goes, ah, goes, goes around the corner. Sure. Yeah. So if I have a look quickly around while I'm in street view, have a look around, there's nothing there, clear blue skies. So, and uh, are you also looking for like hoarder houses or anything that's like um, going to be off-putting or you don't care? Yes and no, because if you can look at this Google Maps street view, you can see that it, it was taken in September 2019. So obviously it's been a couple of years already. This house right here could have, you know, that owner could have left and then maybe a hoarder came in. We don't know. But okay. we do this uh, at a later stage, you know, yep. when we get into, when we actually, after we secure the property and we do our due diligence, that's when we, you know, do, do thorough those inspections yeah. and street, you know, get some, one of our guys, we actually physically go out there and, you know, check everything out. 
But, you know, at least street-wise, it looks fine. You know, nothing nothing too wrong with that. So we go back out, check out the stuff around it. Uh, you know, you've got – it's far away from the main roads, mm-hmm. uh, which is good. Look, it's not like, you know, you've got this little school here. You know, if, if you were to go deeper, you would research the schools, you know, mm-hmm. find out how they rank, find out if they're good schools. I mean, all this stuff is readily available. But this is still just that Just overview. a really sort of overview. Yeah. You know, you're uh, – Look, if you're in for a walk, it is walkable to the beach. I would say probably like a 10 minute walk to yeah. the beach. We can even Google Maps it if you want. You know, Queen's Dog Beach. 20 they, they always overestimate how long it takes. Four minutes driving, walk about 20 minutes. Yeah. And you that's, know. that's always always overestimated. So it probably is more perhaps, like 10, 15. Per, perhaps doable. Maybe there's some shortcuts, you know, through the through the back of some houses or something. Yeah. <laughs> Just go through some of its backyard <laughs> Just maybe. Just fence jumping. Um. But no, it you know, location wise it's fine. You know, there's I wouldn't say there's anything uh anything bad about this. You know, you you not sort of no sort of shops super close by, but I would say there's not so you're not super far from them either. Okay, so so far this is looking like it could be a deal. Could be a deal, pending price. Okay. So are you um, moving into cash flow now to then help determine the price correct, that needs to be offered? Correct. So right now what I would do after looking if these boxes checked out, I would uh pull up uh, our little uh, cash flow analysis. Mm-hmm. So this is something that we just use some r- a really basic analysis or a, or a snapshot of not only uh, what the cash flow position could be like, mm-hmm. but um, uh, but you know some of the estimated costs to buy the property. So this isn't every single moving part, but it's still pretty much like most of them. It's it's good enough, and in many ways, keeping it simple like this is important because if you have a, a super detailed cash flow analysis. Mm-hmm. The thing about a lot of these numbers is not only are they estimates, but they can change over time. Mm. So if you have like if you if you make a decision on some very very specific aspects or specific numbers and they change over time and it it throws a deal out, you're kind of setting yourself up for disappointment potentially, right? So it's really important, just in my opinion, and this has worked for me, just to keep it general but accurate enough. If that makes sense. How big is your portfolio now? Uh, 24. 24 million? Um, or 24 properties? I forgot. Uh, it's 24 properties, but the dollar value is, I think, around 18 or something like that. Okay. So, yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say it's worked for you. It has worked quite yeah. well <laughs> so far. So far. Okay. <laughs> um, in fact, it, you, it probably wouldn't have worked if it was super um, detailed because I probably wouldn't have pulled the trigger on a lot of these houses. Gotcha. If, if okay. I if I over analyzed it. And and is that almost like the importance of it? Because then it can turn into an analysis paralysis. Yes, definitely. It, gotcha. Definitely. Okay. So really simple. I'll just fill this out really quickly. Um Short Ridge Way, Queens Rock. You don't have to do this obviously with the address. Uh you obviously know what property that you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Purchase price, let's say we could buy for five hundred thousand automatically it comes up with the loan amount if you're putting in a 20% deposit. Uh, again, you can adjust these numbers to whatever your personal circumstances are. Mm-hmm. Uh, estimated stamp duty, about 15K. So, Est- just, so just quickly, do you normally work off 20% though when you're doing your numbers? No. I mean, we can tailor it to whoever's buying the property. For okay. me personally, like if I was putting in 20% deposit, then I put 20%. Okay. But otherwise I can just click on this one and uh, change, change it the, right? yeah, just change the, uh, yeah, change it. Uh, in, instead of 0.2, let's say I'm doing 10%, I'll just ch- change it to 0.1 and enter and it will come up with um, 10%, 10% percent instead. Obviously, gotcha. I didn't change this just for display purposes. Yep. Um, but we'll stick to 0.2 because that's what – that's, we, what that's like a default default way of looking at it. Yep, okay. Uh, because there's 20%, there's no LMI, estimated legals, about 1800 to buy the house. I don't know if it needs renovation at this point, so we'll just leave it blank. Mm-hmm. Uh, estimated market rent. We had a look there, so anywhere between five hundred to five fifty. So I reckon you can put in maybe five twenty vacant or in lease. This house was ac- is actually in lease already. So, so what do you mean by that then? So vacant or in lease? Like if it isn't leased, if it is vacant, how do you actually? Like, I'll just what? leave it vacant. I'll just literally just type in vacant. But, but then, then it's got the little four and the dollar sign next to that. Is that like for three weeks, for two weeks? No, no, that no. Kind of? So if it's in lease, which this property is, yeah, I will type in in lease, yeah, and I will literally type in uh, for whatever. Oh, whatever the rent is. Whatever the rent is. Gotcha. Yeah, simple okay. as that. Yep. Um, and how many bedrooms? It's a three bed, one bath. One car space, size of the property was it four fifty eight? I think it was. Go that sounds right. You talking about the square meters of land? Yeah, four fifty eight, four fifty eight square meters. Age of the property, 
Normally I would use a thing called price finder, mm -hmm. uh, but I understand a lot of listeners won't have access to that. So, I mean, you can add in whatever the date, uh, the, the age of the property is. I'm just going to, uh, because I don't have it off the top of my head, I'm just going to take I a stab. I would say 1998. What are your, what's your guess? 1998 sounds good. Yeah. So what's that? About 20. 23 years. 23 years old. Something like that. Uh, construction type, brick and tile. I think it's 25 years now. Is it? I don't, I don't know. know. We're all terrible at mass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not a unit, obviously. Work needed. We don't know. Estimated reno. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So these are all, it, it basically just shows you what it is, right? It doesn't really do much in terms of throwing out numbers. But on the right hand side, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So council fees, I know in about, in Queens Rock, it is around about $2,000 uh, a year, Okay. you know, in terms of council rates. So we put that in there, comes up with annual, month, weekly cost. Pool okay. maintenance, there's no pool for this property. So that doesn't apply. Insurance, this insurance is only for building. So I say about $1,000 a year, which is what I pay for my properties because I only insure my properties for a certain amount, but that's a, a different conversation. So that my estimate is 1000 uh, a year. Management fees in WA is very high, mm -hmm. so 9.9%. Uh, so, you know, I built this in uh, at 9.9%, uh, the cost to, to, to manage the property. I got repayments at 6% uh, interest rates at the moment. I uh, got landlord insurance, uh, that's about $400. So mm -hmm. about $1,400 in total for both uh, building and landlords. And then estimated rent, so income. So this is like where you put in what you think you can rent the property out for. If yep. let's say the house was vacant. So let's say I put in 500 and as a, as a lower rent and I put in maybe 550 as a higher rent. This is a an estimate, right? Okay. And so for anyone listening on iTunes or Spotify right now, so we've gotten the lower end minus $76 a week on the higher end minus $26 a week. Correct. But now what was your percentage, uh, it's not a percentage, your estimated purchase price in the calculator? Estimated purchase price is 500, okay. right? So for this cash flow to make sense, I would need to, you know, let's say for example, I could get it for 450,000, mm -hmm. you know, suddenly the higher end uh, would be, would be higher. Will be will be twenty. So now you're $20. positive twenty bucks. Yeah, maybe. positive twenty. Okay. Now a lot of people get caught up with these numbers, whether you're low or high rent, ten, twenty, thirty dollars a week, that type of thing. You know, uh, any of any of these numbers can throw that off, positive or negative. So I always tell clients, look, don't get too caught up if it's positive or negative by a marginal amount. Mm -hmm. You know, this house, this house, if we could get it for around this price, would be pretty much neutral cash flow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, over time. Your rent will increase, maybe decrease. Over time, the interest rates could increase or could decrease and all this throws it off. But if you just look at it as it is today and it's not going to cost you any money or not very much to hold on to, in my books, that's good enough. So that's a box ticked. Talk me through then the offering process because I'm now looking at this going, okay, so 450, positively geared by 20, negatively geared by 30, high end, low end, like as far as the rent's concerned. You've just said that don't get too fixated on that number. Yep. Whilst it's important, don't mm -hmm. focus on it so much that it can cost you a deal. Mm -hmm. How are you now determining that price? Because if that's the case, you're kind of looking at that going, all right, well, 450 is pretty good. Do, do you then go in with a 450 offer or do you go even lower? Or how do you work out to go here? Uh, let me, actually, let me ask this a different way. Where's the line? Where's the, if it gets to X, we're walking away. I think the line is, um, you have to take into account many, many factors. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, as of recording, which is December, 2023, we're in a very high interest rate environment. Mm -hmm. So to get properties that are neutral or positive geared uh, is pretty good. And actually, no, not that, not, not that easy to achieve. That, that's what I mean. That's pretty good to actually secure. Yeah, a, pretty yeah. good to get something that is neutral to positive geared, mm -hmm. but if let's say, for example, we could get this house for around about the 450K mark or, 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 or thereabouts, mm -hmm. we ascertain that this house, a very, I would say similar comparable, just sold for 510. And that one was less desirable. Mm -hmm. We kind of determined that. So if we could get it for around that price range, at around about the 450K mark, there's clear evidence that the house is a bargain, mm -hmm. a good deal, a below market value property. So even if the rent was thrown off a little bit, let's say we're negative 50 or $100 a week even, yep. depending on your personal situation, maybe you're a higher income earner or whatever. The, in my opinion, the deal could still stack up because a 10% reduction in market value is huge. You know, if you think about it, if you mm. can buy a house that's worth 500 for 450, that's instant equity. 
whichever mm. way you look at it. And if you're negatively geared by 50 bucks a week, it's worst two and a half case thousand. scenario, worst case scenario, if you wanted to sell this house the next day, there's clear evidence that you could get at least 510 for it. And after buying and selling costs and even a bit of tax that you have to pay, you'll probably walk away with, I don't know, 10, 20 grand or something. So, okay. so that, that might be incentive enough to maybe take a little bit of a hit on the cash flow if it was, if it didn't come up as a, like a neutral or positive result. And so as far as that line of where to offer, is that when it also just comes back to personal circumstances? Like I look at this and go, okay, 460, you'd probably still say it's a deal. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 470, is it still, do, do you know what I mean? I think like, 470 would still be a deal for, especially taking into account Quint, how hot and the market is in Quinn's Rock at the moment. Yep. You know, anyone that's uh, done five minutes in the suburb <laughs> to calling agents and seeing what's what's available will know this. And so if you got to 580, does it start to become less of a deal now? 480, you mean? Uh, four, four, <laughs> yeah, 580, five, five. definitely not. <laughs> We're not that kind of buyer's agent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, I mean, 480, I think will be starting to, to bend, you know, what I think would be acceptable or not. Okay. But then, you know, you can just keep, it's one of those things where you kind of look, you have to look at it holistically. Mm -hmm. You know, again, coming back to the, uh, the house that we just looked at as a comparable, the house was worse. Mm. That sold for 510. Yep. So realistically, this house that's better, it may be worth 530 or 540 in the real world. So even if you got it at, five, at 480, at 480 yeah. there's still fat in there. Mm. So, you know, you can, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of have to just, and this is the fun of it, right? You kind yep. of have to think about all these avenues and, you know, one day you're talking yourself into it, the next day you're going, no, it's not that great. Um, so is it a deal? Deal or no deal? The, the price that we pay for it? Yes, absolutely. And what did you actually end up scoring this one for? 460. Because so you, you bought this, didn't you? Yeah, we paid $460,000 for it, which I think is a, is, is a pretty good deal. Um, Jared, can we insert a deal sound effect here? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what deal sounds like. <laughs> Cha ching. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, at four hundred sixty thousand, absolutely. You know, it's something that if if I was building my portfolio initially, mm -hmm. you know, to get myself to my passive income goals, mm -hmm. this is something that I would buy pretty much immediately. Yeah. You know, you buy. You, there's at least fifty k there that you can pull out in equity almost immediately, which can form mm. as almost a full deposit for your next house. Um, the cash flow is good enough, you know, bearing in mind that I was just going to say, there's possibly a little bit of value add in the Renault as well, just with like a light cosmetic cosmetic. I mean, the house is fine as is. One of the things that we advocate is we avoid Renaults. Um, oh, actually, wait a second. I'm picturing the, the other house we were comparing it to, not this one. That's right. This yeah, one was fine. This one was fine. It? Doesn't yeah, yeah, need yeah. Renaults. It's, right. it's a nice, in fact, it's, it's, you know, uh, some people might look at this and go, oh, it's so small and this and that. It's not, it's not like a, it, I, I see that as a bonus, mm -hmm. you know, low maintenance, less headaches, it'll rent forever. You know, all you have to do is just maintain it, make sure everything works inside and yeah, just sit on it and let it grow. Love so it. yeah, it's a pretty good deal. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to, to talk about with Shortridge before we move on to the next property? Yeah. So normally, like I did with the last one, we would again check for power lines, check for floods, check for bushfire zones as well. Uh, this is another uh, uh, website in WA where you can type the address in and you can check for uh, bushfire zones, which I've conveniently done beforehand. And as you can see, it's not. This is good because I even just got so excited with the cash flow that it was like, cool, move on to the next one. It's like, no, no, wait a second. Like, let's, yeah, let's, we have to check checks. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the times we see deals that uh, look great and then suddenly we find out they're in a flood zone and we go, oh, now I know why it's so cheap. Yeah. Uh, because look, rule of thumb, never ever buy anything in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, with bushfire zones, you have to assess where it is. So in WA, a, a lot of, or in Perth in particular, a lot of built up areas would be considered bushfire zones. So as you can see on this map, you can see these areas literally right next to the beach, they deem as bushfire zones. Like I don't think, like, I don't wanna make any assumptions of where bushfires can happen, but you wouldn't expect a house like this one to be in a massively built up suburban area right next to the beach to suddenly light up uh, and, and as, with, a, as a bushfire. Well, I think that the, <laughs> the key word is bush and I can't even really see any bushes around there. So I don't know what's catching yeah. on fire. But. So, I mean, generally speaking, these maps are very conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, they're designed to, uh, you know, protect potentially the uh, the the council or the, the people that put these these maps together. Mm -hmm. um, actually, that, that may not be correct. I'm sure they've 
very sort of deep, <laughs> deep things <laughs> that go into. Just in case, if you're listening and you formulate these, uh, <laughs> these, these, these bush fire maps. But I think common sense prevails, right? Yeah. Like you know, you, you kind of have to just look at it. Um, I mean, if this house was right next to like a national park surrounded by only trees and stuff, then yeah, that would be a problem. Uh, so bushfire zones is clear, flood zones is clear, power lines. One other thing I usually check is vacancy rates. So this website's called SQM Research. It's free. You know, you literally type in the postcode. Mm-hmm. So Queens Rock is 6030. So you click go. So you can see the vacancy rates here. 17, that were massive. Uh, yeah, 17 was, was high. Uh, but right now it's 0.3%. So just for anyone listening, it um, looks like back in 2016 to 18, they rose up to almost 7%. Or yeah, it was 7%. pretty terrible back then. Yeah. But currently in 2023, 24. They're looking outstanding now. 0.3% is pretty much as low as you can go. I've mm-hmm. never, I've only seen one, I forgot which suburb, where it was 0.0%, but I think that was almost like a, a, an a bit error. of a data anomaly. Yeah, anomaly. So 0.3% means that, you, you know, you'll never have a, a property, at least in this po- at this point in time, that will become vacant. Uh, basically this is a good deal, you know, all the numbers stack up. It's definitely a bargain at $460,000, uh, 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 per week. Sounds We're, like even at 470, not, 480, it would have been good. Per week, sorry, it's 460,000 purchase price. I would love that. 460 um, grand a week. Yeah. I mean, as clear as day, I think <laughs> this house should be, uh, should be worth around about the 510 to 550 mark, uh, in today's market. So there's a healthy bit of fat in there. We actually, uh, uh, just really quickly on this one as well, we, mm-hmm. we actually did a, a, a CBA desktop valuation on it uh, oh, yeah. before the client signed on the property mm-hmm. and it actually came back at 538. So that's, uh, look, I mean, desktop valuations are computer generated, so they shouldn't be taken as, 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 uh, as gospel. But they are lendable. It's, it's, it's a good indication. That's all I'll say. And can you just very quickly, because this is actually a very uh, powerful subject, I think, for anyone that doesn't know mm-hmm. what you're talking about here yep. and is potentially confusing them with like the auto vows that some people can get generated. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between a CBA desktop and like a RP data auto vow? RP data auto vow is, is basically just a report that comes out of RP data or mm-hmm. CoreLogic, yep. right? Um, banks put their branding on it, mm-hmm. but anyone with access to CoreLogic can bring up these, uh, these reports. And the reports are highly inaccurate in my opinion, because it pulls up data from properties that sold like eight months ago. Mm. It doesn't take into account everything that we just took into account. So properties on main roads or properties that need a lot of work or mm-hmm. properties that are compromised in whatever way. And on the other hand, it also takes into account like properties that are super nice, mm-hmm. you know, so it's, you have to look at like for likes. Mm-hmm. But if the bank is telling you that a valuation coming from them is significantly higher than what you can purchase a property for. Like I said, it's a pretty good indication as well. It's just another plus on top of all the other pluses that we talked about. Absolutely. Cool. Right, moving on to, to property number three. Property number three is a uh, another property that we had the opportunity to buy in, in Perth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in a sunny suburb called Dawesville. Dawesville uh, and Daw- this is Roma Court. Roma Court, yeah. So interesting thing about this house is, as you can see, it's advertised as, or not advertised, but at least on realestate.com.au, it's a four bed, one bath, but it's actually a four bed, two bath, two garage. So there's actually two full bathrooms in there, not just like a toilet and laundry, but a proper shower, yeah, okay. bathroom, vanity, everything. So a lot of the times, especially with off market properties, you do get these errors. So it's really important to confirm with the agent exactly what you're looking at. So same thing. Four bed, two bath, two garage. This one is on a big block, 809 square meters. Good size. So very quickly, we look into uh, comparables. Um, I've got it up uh, here already. So four bed, two bath, two garage. I mean, the age of it, again, probably similar to the last one around 1990s, mid nineties built that type Mm -hmm. of property. This wouldn't apply, you know, brand new house, that type of thing. This one, we can have a quick look. Maybe, yeah, similar, 579,000, similar oh, block size. The block's a bit weird. Yep. Um, you know, nicely renovated inside, however, so that might be a key difference because if we look at our one, it's not too – I mean, these are old, 2013, uh, but I know for a fact that it, it basically looks like this anyway. Right, so it, so it hasn't been updated. hasn't really been updated, so it's quite quite, quite similar. Not too bad, not, not too great. It's not this. This, is, this was before the last person that bought it. Right. So they, did a, they obviously did a reno – uh, the, the, the owners. Nice little um, pergola at the back. Pergola, big block, a lot of, lot of potential to add Good value here. 
Shedding um, by the look of it as well. You know, shed, yeah, yep. brick and tile. Yeah, just a just a standard house. Very a very a very stock standard investment property. Mm-hmm. So I reckon this one, yeah, you know, ma- somewhat comparable. It's got a bit of a uh, a cosmetic reno to it. Uh, so that sold for five seventy nine. Early December. So we're talking. Very uh, that recent. was very very recent. Yes, a yep. few days back. All these I would say would not be comparable. Like this one looks like a, a That's mansion. Huge. Yep. I'm not even got to bother looking at this. Is just a picture of a sunset. Uh, <laughs> you got this one. This is a brand new built house. You know, obviously nine hundred thousand, not really comparable. Two thousand square meters, incomparable. Big pool, incomparable. This one might be four bed, two bathroom, garage, six ninety square meters. You so know, we're gonna have a look through this. Four weeks ago, by the look of it. You know, it's uh, I would say similarly aged property. Mm-hmm. Um, these are nice pictures. So you know, maybe it's been a little bit doctored, quite close to the beach. However, so that's something we need to take into account. Yeah, how close are we with Roma? Uh, so Roma, close. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's actually similar. Quite close. Very similar uh, proximity to the beach. So that's a, 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 a definitely a good sign. So if this one's off for six fifty, depending on what we can buy ours for, maybe it could be a good deal. Uh, this one four two one, bit older, five fifty five. You know, this one may even be a little bit similar. Mm-hmm. Not too much info, but this one I can Im- immediately tell that it's on a much smaller block. Yeah. Um, so- and it's also on the uh, yeah, not not too far away from the water either. Yeah, so that could be comparable. So I would say, you know, around about the sort of five, uh, anywhere between around the 550 mark to about 650. I know that's a big range. And at 650 there, can we have a look at the photos again? Has that been renovated or is that newer or if we Sorry, just go? let me just bring it up again. That's right, just uh, that one so there. So this one. Yeah. So just to see more of like a comparable for the top Look, end. it's got this massive pergola thing at the front. There's definitely value in this, you know. Pergola's um, nice. Front side uh, looks like the garden's been taken care of. Inside, I would say fairly original. You know, it's got yeah. this nice living area, high ceilings, but not renovated. No. These ovens and stuff, you can tell they're from the 90s. Yep. I grew up on these. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, they, they may have you know added a new kitchen here and there, like little bits of it, but nothing nothing spectacular, right? It's a decent house, but not great. You know, kind of 90s bathroom-ish as well. So I would say somewhat comparable, maybe it's a, 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 a bit nicer because it's got good outdoor living areas but, and, and things like that. But not completely nicer, is it? Not completely, depending yeah. on what the price is like i like i said so so we've got our range yeah a range about 550 to 650 k that type of thing and was there any inkling from the agent as to to what they were thinking on this one uh look for this one they uh there wasn't because we uh we have a very very good relationship with this agent uh that we bought this property off so there was basically he just told up us straight up what it would take to get it and uh and we kind of worked from there so yeah, I mean, from a value perspective, we can ascertain what it is. In terms of the rent, we can mm-hmm. have a look at what these houses would be renting for. Uh, so if I type in here again, really quickly, Dawesville house, four bed, search, nine properties for rent, which is again, quite low for mm-hmm. a suburb. You know, your starting point, if I go just lowest to highest, starting point 560 per week, right? And if I were to look at this versus this, similar. You know, this is also got. A, this looks like a carport, which is really bad. They should close the garage, so you can see maybe that it is an actual garage, but it might be a carport. Yeah, similar house. You know, so I reckon our one would uh, potentially rent for around about the same money. Yeah, four bed, two bar, two garage. All right, was that five sixty a week? That one was five sixty a week. Five yeah, six. correct. And that's the lowest one on the list. That's the lowest, absolute lowest. So okay. I guess worst case scenario, five sixty per week. Okay. That's what we're looking at. So again, I would punch it into the um, the the cash flow analysis. Um, I'm not going to bother with the address, but yep. if we put in, I don't know. Let's say if we can potentially buy this house for 500k, you know, I think that might make it a a, a pretty decent deal. So same thing here, all basically the same. You, we're not adjusting anything here. I know for in fact, Dawesville has about two thousand dollars a year of council fees. Mm-hmm. Uh, rent lower rent five fifty, higher rent. I would say, I don't know, 580 or something like that, being a little bit conservative. Again, you're, you're, you're somewhat neutral at around a 500K purchase price. So about 6% rental yield. So things are cool. looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good depending on the purchase price. Um, now, coming to the purchase price, yep. we, this is a house that we actually bought uh, and we picked this house up for 480,000. So 480 grand and there's like 600 and something comparables. Yeah. I mean, this is Jesus. the uh, the sometimes the what you get when you focus on on getting bargains. 
you know, and if I were to type in four hundred and eighty thousand dollars in the cash flow analysis, now we're positive seventeen. Immediately, we're, in my we're we're looking much nicer. Yeah, yeah. You know, six percent yield, but most importantly, like we're, I I believe we are so far below market value, considering. Let's not look at the 650k house. Let's mm-hmm. assume this one is much, much nicer. But I reckon this one is pretty comparable. And that's 555. That that's sold for 555. You know, and this one, I don't know what the land size is, but I dare say it's not 800 square meters. Mm. Otherwise, this selling agent would have plastered it all over the the ad. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it's big, if it's a big block, most people, most agents would make a uh, a big deal out of it. Yeah, I don't think that looks like 800 square meters at all. Yeah, um, no, that's probably more like around 600. So small, much smaller block. You know, similar house, similar, um, location. similar location, similar age, sold for five fifty five, uh, and we bought ours on a much larger block at four eighty. That's, in my opinion, that trumps everything else. And so, but before you get excited like I did, just before jumping from cash flow and the analysis side of things, yeah, what else are we checking as far as like power lines, bushfires? Same thing. It, everything's Same looking thing. good. Yeah, you know, just have a scroll around as you go into nothing around. You got an antenna there. Don't mistake that for a power line. Um, yeah, just looks like a normal kind of road. Um, if anything, quite a well kept street as well. Well kept street. You know, we know that it's quite close to the beach, which is good. Mm-hmm. But the block shape's a little bit weird. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a weird shaped block. But there's all this space here that you can do stuff with. You know, I wouldn't say it's subdividable, but you know, you can add a pool or something in the future if you wanted to. Zooming out. Nothing weird around. You're not close to any sort of main roads. Yeah, I think it's a pretty pretty good spot. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Now, and if I were to quickly look at uh, the flood maps and the bushfire maps and so on. So, yeah, no uh, no massive power lines around here. We already know that. Five Roma. We'll check out the flood maps. This can get a little bit tricky with... Uh, coastal. With, with coastal. See, it starts to flood like, you know, what, what would be considered flood zones here. So we're far enough away. But vacancy rates, again, you can type in Dawesville, 0.9%, still relatively low. So that's definitely a good sign. So all in all, I think it's a good deal. You know, something that we bought, client's super happy about it. Um, you would be. <laughs> purchased it for 480, clear signs that it's worth at least 550 to 600. Uh, rents should be for at least 550 per week, which makes it around about 6% rental yield. Uh, good growth area, anyone that knows Dawesville, it's, uh, it's currently pumping at the moment as well. So yeah, right. happy days with this one for sure. Love it. Simon, I think this is going to be such a valuable episode for so many people and for for so many different reasons. But I think if you're listening to this right now, in my opinion, the way that you need to treat this episode is more of a, like almost a play along at home. Find your property that you want. Follow the list that Simon's put together here because like you said in the very beginning, none of this is uh, RP data. None of this is price finder. Mm -hmm. None of this is stuff that you have to pay for access for. This is all Mm -hmm free on the internet, you can start checking out properties that you've actually like maybe got your eye on at the moment. But one of the important things to remember, and like you're also saying, a lot of these deals have come from decade long relationships. They haven't just fallen out of the sky. Yeah. yeah. But but the process, whether it's been given to you by someone that you built a long-term relationship with, or you've just found it on Mm realestate.com, the process is the same. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it's the same. And once you get good at it, you just do it very quickly. Well, like you said, this is something that's like done on the phone in, in sort of 30 seconds when you're on. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the most important thing, look at comparables, look at the cash flow. If those two boxes aren't ticked, forget the rest. But then don't get excited if those two boxes are ticked. You've still got some more checks to do. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So first one, not a deal. Second one, deal. Third one, deal. Yes. <laughs> Love it. All right, Simon Lou, is there anything else that you wanted to sort of uh, wrap this one up with, mate, before we part ways today? Uh, no, I think, you know, we've been quite thorough with everything. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, been a pleasure to, to kind of show you guys, uh, at least at a very high level, uh, how, how to look at properties and hopefully that helps. Okay. Exit sound effect. (laughs) (laughs) Simon Lou, thank you so much for jumping on the show, mate. Thanks, Todd.